Chapter 14 of Piano and Song by Friedrich Wieck. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Chapter 14 Extravagances in Singing and Piano Playing An Evening Party at Mr. Gold's Dramatis Personae Mr. Gold, the banker, fond of music, Mr. Gold, read by Peter Bishop. Mrs. Gold sings and is an invalid. Mrs. Gold, read by Liberty Stump. Mr. Silver, bookkeeper, formerly a singer with Strauss. Mr. Silver, read by David Olson. Mr. Pius, a friend of the family, a musical impostor and a hypocrite generally. Mr. Pius, read by David Lawrence. Mr. Forte, a piano virtuoso of weak nerves. Mr. Forte, read by Marty Chris. Domini, a piano teacher. Domini, a piano teacher, read by Algie Pug. Emma, his daughter. Emma, read by Sarah Holtz. Mrs. Gold has just been singing in the modern Italian manner, suddenly alternating exaggerated high and low tones, given in a jerking manner, with inaudible pianissimo in the throat, and quavering on every note, with many ornaments, and always a quarter of a tone too flat. She sang all the four verses of Fondly I Think of Thee by Krebs. Will you not go on, Mrs. Gold? The piano is a little too high, and you are obliged to accustom yourself a little to it. I cannot sing any more. That beautiful song has taken such hold of me, and I feel so badly. Whispers to Domini. Mr. Forte did not accompany me well, either. Sometimes he did not come in right, and played too feebly, and sometimes he improvised too much in playing, and overpowered my voice, which is a little weak just now. Aside to Emma. What an evening of singing! Oh, dear! Who has been earnestly talking about stocks all the evening in an adjoining room, rushes in, but rather late, after the close of the song, and impetuously presses his wife's hand. Marvellous, magnificent, delicious, wonderful. My dear, you are in excellent voice this evening. If Jenny Lind could only have heard you. Charming, superb, how touching. There is a religious character in this piece, something holy about it. I beg of you, do sing that air by Voss, True Happiness. That will make our enjoyment complete. It is truly ravishing. There is something divine in singing, and your expression, your feeling, madame, you give yourself up so entirely to the composition. Mrs. Gold has already taken up true happiness and can hardly wait while Mr. Forte murmurs off the introduction, quite after his own fancy, with a sentimental piano. Mr. Pius drops a tear at the close of the introduction, the four bars of which have been transformed into eight bars by the great virtuoso. During the tremulous affected performance of True Happiness, Mr. Pius rolls up his moistened eyes, and at the end of the first verse, where the accompanist once more gives the reins to his fancy, he says, I am speechless. I cannot find words to express my emotion. Aside to Emma. That you may call forged sentiment, the counterfeit of feeling. You hear now how one ought not to sing. For an earnest, true musician, such a warmth in singing is only empty affectation, disgusting, sentimental rubbish, and hollow dissimulation. You will, however, frequently meet with such amateur infelicities. Mrs. Gold has finished singing all the verses of true happiness, and seems now to have almost entirely recovered. Mr. Gold continues to converse about stocks in the adjoining room. Domini remains with Emma at the end of the parlor, depressed and worried. Keeps his seat at the piano and says in French to Mrs. Gold, Madame, you have reached the climax of the beautiful in music. I count it one of the happiest moments of my artistic tour to be allowed to breathe out my soul at the piano in the presence of one like yourself. What a loss that your position must prevent you from elevating the German opera to its former greatness as its most radiant star by this time quite well. I must confess that Jenny Lind never quite satisfied me when she was here. She is, and must always remain, a Swede, 
utterly cold if she had been educated here she would have listened to more passionate models than in stockholm and that would have given the true direction to her sensibility you are quite right you have a just estimate of her in paris where she might have heard such examples she lived in perfect retirement i was giving concerts there at the time but she refused to sing in my concerts and therefore she did not even hear me whom the excitement of the singing has at length reached do you feel inclined now madame to execute with me the duet from the creation between adam and eve here is the creation but we will sing it by and by mr forte is just going to play us his latest composition for the left hand and some of the music of that romantic deeply sensitive chopin rushes in from his stock discussion oh yes chopin's b major mazurka that was also played at my house by henselt thalberg and dreyshock oh it is touching oh, oh how, how touching. touching to his daughter if he plays it in the same manner in which he accompanied true happiness you will hear how this mazurka should not be played it by the way is not at all touching it gives quite boldly the polish dance rhythm as it is improvised by the peasants in that country but it is however idealized after chopin's manner mr forte plays several perilous runs up and down with various octave passages all the time keeping his foot on the pedal and connects with these immediately and without a pause the mazurka which he commences presto he played it without regard to time or rhythm but with a constant rubato and unmusical jerks a few notes were murmured indistinctly pianissimo and played very retardando then suddenly a few notes were struck very rapidly and with great force so that the strings rattled and the final b major chord cost the life of one string excellent bravissimo what a comprehension of the piece such artistic performances make one even forget the stock exchange you agitate my inmost nerves the english poet pope holds that no created man can penetrate the secrets of nature but you have penetrated the secrets of my soul now do play at once the f sharp minor mazurka opus six what a musical evening mrs gold has prepared for us what sublime sorrow lies in this production aside what would father strauss say to this affected unmusical performance that bids defiance to all good taste mrs gold it would be well to send for the tuner to replace this broken b string the next one will break soon for it is already cracked and its tone is fallen with a superior air it is of no consequence that frequently happens to me but i never mind it the piano is a battlefield where there must be sacrifices whispers to emma he thinks that if the sound is not musical still it makes a noise and tones out of tune produce more effect than those that are pure where did he learn piano playing my child he has not learned it that is genius which comes of itself instruction would have fettered his genius and then he would have played distinctly correctly unaffectedly and in time but that would be too much like the style of an amateur this uncontrolled hurly-burly which pays no regard to time is called the soaring of genius mr forte storms through various unconnected chords with the greatest rapidity with the pedal raised and passes without pause to the f sharp minor mazurka he accents vehemently divides one bar and gives it two extra quarter notes and from the next bar he omits a quarter note and continues in this manner with extreme self-satisfaction till he reaches the close and then after a few desperate chords of the diminished seventh he connects it with list transcription of schubert's serenade in d minor the second string of the two-lined b snaps with a rattle and there ensues a general whispering whether the piece is by mendelssohn or doller or beethoven or proch or schumann until finally mr silver mentions schubert's serenade mr forte concludes with the soft pedal which in his inspired moments he had already made frequent use of to emma 
you should never play in company without mentioning previously what you were going to perform you observe as soon as the serenade was mentioned it put a stop to the guessing what a glorious performance what an artistic treat what spirituality in his playing asking mr forte for information i noticed in the serenade you made only one bar of the two where it modulates to f major in your rapid playing of the passage was that accidental aside he ought to have played a little slower just there in such beautiful passages everything must be left to the suggestion of one's feelings perhaps another time i may make three bars just as inspiration and genius may intimate those are aesthetic surprises henselt moskelis talberg and clara Wieck do not execute in that manner and consequently can produce no effect and do not travel to emma i hope that your natural taste and your musical education will preserve you from such preposterous extravagances such play makes one feel quite uncomfortable and worried probably that is what you call devilish modern yes but do people like it certainly a great many people do it has a superior air of genius and sounds very original mrs gold has the creation in her hand and mr silver leads her to the piano for the execution of the grand duet between adam and eve mr forte is exhausted and dominie plays the accompaniment mr silver sings intelligently and unaffectedly mrs gold as before but with still less regard to time and more out of tune but she tries to compensate for this by introducing very long ornaments at the fermate and the allegro sung with her thin piercing overstrained voice and she frequently rolls up her black eyes at the conclusion mrs gold was led to an armchair in great exhaustion of feeling the divine art of music celebrates its perfect triumph in such interpretations of hayden mrs gold were those delicious fermate of your own invention no the charming viardo garcia first introduced them as rosina in the barber of seville and i had them written down by a musician in the theatre but the employment of them in this duet is my own idea i have already surprised and delighted a great many people with them in parties the grand rushing chromatic scale with which the artistic garcia astonishes every one when acting the dreaming fainting amina in la sonnambula i introduce in the grand aria of the divine prophet rather timidly it is true for the boldness of a garcia can only be acquired on the stage but father jenny lynn sang in this duet in vienna quite simply and with a pure religious spirit that is the reason mrs gold says jenny lynn sings too coldly and ought to listen to more passionate models but we will talk more about this at home now mr dominie will not your daughter emma play us some little trifle afterwards i will execute with mr silver by thy loving kindness o lord and a few duets by kuchen and finish if the company wishes with the grace aria will you allow me first to replace this broken string after dominie has finished mr forte strides up to the piano and plays his etude for the left hand with the right hand extended towards the company to mr forte after the conclusion of the piece would it not have been easier and more to the purpose if you had used both hands we must forgive old people such pedantic observations you entirely mistake my standpoint do you not see that i am standing with one foot in the future are you not aware that the public wish not only to listen but to see something strange do you not perceive also that my appearance of ill health produces a great musical effect do you not feel the special charm and the fine effect which is produced by the left hand playing alone and no less by the right hand extended is it so well probably feeling has taken a false direction with me i shall be obliged to accustom myself to such parisian flights of sentiment emma played chopin's ballad in a flat major after dominie had previously announced it the company were attentive at the conclusion 
Bravo! A very good beginning, Mr. Domini. I am sorry that I am obliged to take leave now. I am obliged to go to two more soirees this evening, and have many letters of introduction to deliver. Miss Emma, I have just heard that you play finely a great deal of Chopin's music. Let us hear his two latest nocturnes. To Emma. Have you heard the famous Camilla Pleyel play Kolkbrenner's charming D minor concerto? Do you not also play such brilliant music? For example, Duhler's beautiful, pathetic nocturno in D-flat. Mr. X lately played that to us enchantingly. I know it. I am teaching it to my little sister, Cecilia. Will you now allow her to play Chopin's two nocturnes, Opus 48? I will say nothing about the conclusion of the singing, the grace aria. At midnight there was a grand supper, washed down with sweet wine, and seasoned with bitter recollections of this musical evening. End of chapter 14